Today's guest is Anne Murakami and the Digital Wizard, oh, <laughs> Kat Nibai, and Kamada Pan. Anne was actually one of my first mentors um, in the grant writing program. Um, she gave me a, a realistic view of what was really going on that, that helped going forward. And she's been on the district scholarship committee for several terms um, and then has invited me to join that group. So she was born and raised in Kauai and Hawaii. And other than in Hawaii, her educational endeavors have taken her to Cleveland, Ohio, Spain for a year, and Venezuela for a year as a Rotary Ambassadorial Scholar. She's been a Rotarian since 1998 and moved to PA from Los Angeles 11 years ago. And she's currently a force in the Port Angeles and Noon Rotary. So please take it from here with your program on her journey to Antarctica, a fascinating world of nature at its best. Thank you, Kathy. Can you hear me from, if I stand here so I can yeah. um, see the... Yeah. If you could bring up the map. Yeah. Look at the baby one more time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Okay, I'm going to, um, just in case somebody other than Bill, who has mm -hmm. been down there, he tells me, um, somebody else goes, I'll give you a little more insight, not only of Antarctica, but getting there. Um, it was very interesting because this was the first cruise I was on where we had to fill out a health questionnaire, have your doctor, um, give you pretty much a clean bill of health. Because once you leave Argentina, you and the ship's doctor, you the two of you are on your own as far as your health goes. Because in Antarctica, you're only penguins and whales <laughs> and icebergs. And so um, that aspect was very different. We flew into Buenos Aires where the group met. And that was something interesting too. If you do this, please go a day ahead because if you miss that flight down to Ushuaia, Argentina, um, or something happens like it did with a lot of members from the cruise I was on, Remember that FAA total blank out for days on their computer and none of the flights could go. This is back in January. Well, that happened to a lot of the cruise people because it happened on the day they were flying. They got stuck. They came rolling in at the last minute. But um, being that I've traveled quite a bit, we always go a day early. So we missed all that craziness. And the cruise, the cruise lines chartered two commercial flights to take the whole group down together to Ushuaia so that we all have lost people. And um, what we experienced though in Buenos Aires, and it was worth going early, because that was my third or fourth time into Buenos Aires, and it's a fascinating city. It's probably my favorite city in South America, very European. Um, they say they don't speak Spanish there, they speak Castellano, which is Spain's Spanish. So yeah. right? they're, so, they're much more related to this Spanish version of the Spain Spanish than the South American Spanish. Their monetary system, if we have any bankers here, oh my God, their monetary system is a disaster. Um, the official rate of exchange was 160 pesos to the dollar when we were there but they have this gray slash black market that um you just go to this big shopping street that's called florida which is florida and our way of pronouncing it and you can have all these guys walking around saying cambio cambio and they'll change your dollars now there's a small risk you might get counterfeit but you, instead of 160 pesos to the dollar, mm -hmm. we got 320 pesos to the dollar on this gray slash black market. I don't know what you actually call it. But the police are all around. They look the other way because everybody there is trying to earn a living. They had a 
inflation rate when we were there. Can you imagine that? Ah, so, you know, and now I looked up their um, conversion rate. It's now 260 instead of 160 pesos to the dollar on their official rate. So can you imagine what you can get with your dollar going on to the gray or black market? So that's a craziness down there. And because of this, all the real estate is transacted in US dollars. So, so just a little tip, if anybody goes down there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, when we got down to Ushuaia, there was another total different world. Nobody used the official rate. Everybody traded on the gray or black market, in, even in the stores. So you and take a hundred dollar bills. They don't like fifties. They don't like twenties. I don't know why. They want a hundred dollar bills. If you use your credit card, you are really going to be paying because it's only on the official rate. So take cash if you go there. Okay, getting down to Ushuaia was okay because there's a chartered flight. As you can see on this map, that was the intended uh, route of the ship, the crew, cruise. But in Antarctica, nothing is set in stone because the weather changes on a dime, everything, you know, so the captains have to really be on the watch and they're, it was very good that um, they, and you see, next slide, the lower mm -hmm. one actually. This is where we actually went, which is quite different. On the right side was not really part of the ship, but the weather allowed it. So the captain took us to the Weddell Sea and it was actually his first time there as well. Because he said people just don't go to that side, but they're so um, seasoned. And, uh, with this, uh, and this is the pretty good thing, Jesus. They've been in existence for 140 years. They're one of the first people going down to the Antarctic area. They've been flying the Norwegian coast, so they're used to icebergs and all that. They've been going up and down the coast, transporting cargo, mail, et cetera, for 140 years when they decided, right, hey, the business is in tourism. So they also have these expedition cruises now along with their usual cargoes. Okay, um, and if you have any questions, stop me anytime because this is just an informal presentation. Like a, you know, we're all in my, our living room chit-chatting <laughs> about Antarctica because it was great. I mean, I would recommend it highly. Save up your pennies and go. Even the scientists on the ship says that things will change with the global warming and all that. They've seen the changes and it will change even more. So they said, don't wait too long. Plus, there are a lot more ships down there. There used to be only a couple companies going around um, for tourism. When we got back into Ushuaia, there were seven expedition ships waiting to be loaded and unloaded. And one was anchored off the coast because the birds were all taken. And the other important thing is pick your company wisely. We, we found that out by accident because there were so many accidents down there in Antarctica this past season that even our Coast Guard went down to investigate what was going on there because there were uh, oh, several deaths also. And one ship was on its either maiden voyage or second voyage down in Australia going out to Antarctica. And I don't know if the captain was not really familiar with the changing weathers down there, but just as the ship was leaving, it dashed into the dock. And I guess what the dock people say, there might have been some internal structural damage on the ship, because when the ship was heading down to Antarctica, um, what they call a rogue wave, but then when you're in the Drake Passage, to me, everything's a rogue wave. You know? it's like, <laughs> but the ship got hit with a wave and caused the death of one person because a window caved in <clears> onto <throat> this person. And then there was another accident that people say was preventable where they stopped to do an excursion on an island, but it was totally exposed and where they um, put people off and to shore. So the zodiac caught a wind 
draft and it tipped over. And that caused several deaths. But from what I hear, that could be totally preventable by not going into an open cove like that. And the captain should always take you into a protective cove so um, you don't get into these things with the waves and the wind. So anyway, so think wisely, you know, go and re do your research if you ever go down there because it is fantastic, but it is also nature at its best in doing whatever she wants. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna show you a video and this was actually our cruise. And luckily it's a professionally made video because the cruise ship had <laughs> a professional uh, photographer on board they do with all the expedition cruises and the video is included we didn't have to go up tons of money for it anything was included they um, emailed the link to us after we got home and i want to share it too with you because i couldn't have done better <laughs> Sorry for the commercials, but <laughs> that's Dali Ushuaia. Young and all of the I've been quite a while from January 13th to the 20th. Passage, which they call either Drake Lake if it's called or Drake Shake if it's. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this picture here is with one of the scientists from UC Santa Clara. Um, and there were quite a few scientists on board doing um, research, mostly on whales when we were down there. But that's the entertainment. If you like the casinos and the song and dance and shows and magic and all that, there's none of that on an expedition ship. But there's a ton of um, science-related lectures, whether it's about whales or there was a uh, ornithologist on board with, for birds. Um, they talked about uh, the forming of sea ice and icebergs and a whole lot of science things, even time knots. Now it is not in things. Okay. Um, we had two registered drones on board too. And that was the um the Like any other ship. Yes. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> Thank the captain. 
Penguins galore. <laughs> Mostly chin straps and adelis. It's just beautiful, even on a cloudy day. Lots of horses and humpbacks all day. when you cross that Antarctic circle. <laughs> Well, it's just beautiful. You're yeah. sitting there in the tall grass around you in the dining room, and you're sitting there and you're just hanging and going by and orchards and hunters. So One of the exhibition gals. This is up in the bridge. This ship was only like three or four years old, and they had every modern equipment, navigation stuff up there. But because 
things are so unexpected. Icebergs are 90% underwater. You only see a little bit above water. He always has somebody on the bridge. And you know, it's daylight all the time. So, uh, it's somebody is always on the bridge and find out the life watch. 24 hours, he has something to do. It's just fabulous watching these whales. Oh it was a hybrid ship. So it was like a huge, huge, ginormous Prius. Because it ran on a regular engine and battery banks. So, um, and this company prides themselves on um, e the ecosystem and taking care of it. So there were no plastic bottles. They gave you a metal water bottle and they had filling stations on every floor where you can put the soap with the water. And um, with the hybrid, when the whales were close to the ship, they often would cut the engine and just run on battery. We didn't interfere with the rail, and they would be safe sitting on the ship. Oh, yeah, scratching my wrist. <laughs> it's one of the turning states. This is a, what they call a skewer. And that was the mean goofy, ugly, temperate bird. It would steal penguin eggs and eat the chicks out of the eggs. And if it saw a this is the, the ramp where you got off and go into the zodiac. It was a side lowering ramp, so it was very easy to get in and out of the zodiac. And here they are trying to make it easier for all of us to get up into that ice to go walking around. <laughs> You see what I mean by being the ship is always protected <clears throat> and surrounded by more isolate the land so that we didn't get caught in any road waves. Yeah. This was a fabulous iceberg. And according to the exhibition team, by the end of the day, the, the park would probably fall in. So we were lucky to see it. We should also have eight feelings in the board. Kayaking or snowshoeing. Uh, we did a um, citizen science thing where we went to collect 
thrill and get to see water temperature or the salinity and all that and all that information will come back to Strait Institute in San Diego. What was the one? Tom went to the Antarctic ship. He, oh, yeah. he said when he walked in, she means he didn't feel his toes anymore. Well, that's what you know. So it was like a quick running, go on there and run out. <laughs> but the scan people was very warm. So this was the same as people going on and go there. And that costed some extra money, but the money went to Hertie Gruden's foundation, which does give out grants. In fact, we applied for one. We haven't gotten it, but we're going to apply again. <laughs> and they give out grants around the world to help environmental projects. Around the world, meaning to places they go to. And they go to a lot of places other than the poles. Um, they go out of um, Vancouver, we saw their ship up in Haines, Alaska, well place. You know, there's nothing there. It's smaller than Port Angeles. What's the camping for one night? Yes. One oh, night. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> French flag. They don't even respond to these comments. This was an active um, research, uh, two buildings. I can't remember if it was French or Center of who it belonged to. Or we did see a French uh, provision hospital. This is weird. I think this is kind of a sister ship. And they say they almost never bump into each other like this. And they'll pass through each other. Both ships are hybrid ships. When we were heading back up north again, going around that stretch of the Celtic Antarctic up to the Weather Sea, and we see a big difference in the landscape. Where before it was all ice, and now at least you can see that land. 
Icebergs, but sea ice because it's so cold, they form out at sea. And they really do for sculpture, they get washed up on shore from the tide. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yes, and this is inside the uh, weather sea. And we were trying to get on land here, but the penguins would not let us. They first crowded the whole landing area and we said no. <laughs> You can hear Johnny that 30,000. Okay, you can, you can stop. It. Okay. Okay, so that was pretty much our last um, series of um, Antarctica and the Weather Sea side. And then we headed back up north because we were trying to beat a storm. And the captain said the ship will be fine. But what was it? 11 meter seas or something? Yeah, they were predicting 11 meter seas. And he said, the ship will be fine, but you probably will not be happy with me, he said. Yeah, so we raced back up to Ushuaia. We did beat the storm. And so we had more time in Ushuaia to run around the town before our charter flight back to Argentina. So that's pretty much my presentation on what we saw in, good, what, 16, 17 days there. A lot of penguins, whales, a lot of nature, which unfortunately we don't. Here we do see it, but a lot of people in the country don't see it anymore. And so if you have any questions, you know, I'll be around. Feel free to ask anything. Or if any of you decide to go down there and you want to get in touch with me, Laurel or um, Kathy both want to get, get in touch with me. So ask yeah, questions. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. All right. Well, thank you so much.